The first time I ever saw that level preview was in a Best Buy. I was just in Best Buy, and this was up on the TVs and the displays. Just someone was playing this, or... No, actually, it was just a, a demo or something, but that's where I first saw this level. And I had never seen a James Bond's uh, green outfit that he's wearing there to match at the end of the movie before. And I was like, oh, I wonder what level that is, because I hadn't beaten it. And it's just very interesting to think that there was a time that Best Buy GoldenEye was up on the display to use, you know, as a current game that I hadn't beaten yet. But this is the final of the regular missions, and it's pretty easy, but it can be a pain in the ass. Like, at the very beginning, that guy off in the distance, he can fuck you up. If you don't just keep shooting into basically thin air like I do, because I normally end up being in that way. And if you walk backwards, you can immediately get some body armor. And I just completely take it back. Body armor is not rare in <laughs> GoldenEye Double O Agent. I guess I was just thinking too much about Perfect Dark, where shields, which is the body armor equivalent, are like non existent through all of it, I think. And I think it just got that mixed up. Body arm is actually quite common on uh, Double O Agent and Gold Knight. But this mission, it doesn't really match the movie very well, but you know, whatever. The game doesn't match the movie all that well altogether, but there is an area that looks like this at the end of the game, I mean, one well, movie. Although Natalia's with you and there's this whole big thing with Boris and all that. I mean, I guess for the time being, you know, I mean, that this was a small group of developers and just everything that was going on uh, in gaming at the time with how limited everything was, this was pretty damn good. I mean, it looks like the movie, so that's good enough. Oh, I forgot to drop the grenade. Yeah, the, the way I deal with this level really is I just kind of make sure there's no one coming up behind you. Be sure to grab both body armor, there's another one right there. You know, because guys can come up behind you and that's where the problem is. Basically, just don't get swarmed and try not to completely use up all your ammo at once. That's why I only have one ZMG out, because if you have both out, then you can easily just run through your ammo. And you can chase uh, Trevelyan here. This is a really stupid mission because of the, like how he runs away from you. It's pretty annoying. There's ways that you can like cheese this if you're really good, and I'm not quite that good. I barely ever play this level because it's really not that fun. I don't really like it. But yeah, uh, or you can just kind of stand in the middle here, and he runs back and forth, and it looks like he's running like really sporadically fast. Now this area up here is where it can kind of get annoying because he looks exactly like regular guards from a distance, and you know you might get caught up shooting at him while there's guards coming at you. Oh, the music sped up. And here's the final showdown. Guards are infinitely spawning, too. And I don't know why the ZMG is so popular at the end of the game. I feel like this is another level where they could have had AR-33s. I mean, Trevelyan uses one. And I get stuck in this fucking ring with him. So fucking stupid. But yeah, you can run out of ammo really easily in this, but... This mission is really easy to do, and... If you just know what you're doing, although it did take me a couple tries, but you just really gotta know what you're doing, know where guards come from and everything. And your volume was always better as I struggled to jump down. This part can fuck you up, but not if you just jump down and immediately turn where he is and shoot and you shoot him right off. You don't get to see the whole satellite, uh, or whatever it was, fall on him like you do in the movie. But you do get to see him fall, and it really just looked goofy, but... There goes James just jumping onto the helicopter like that. Seems... pretty risky. And I think that's supposed to be Natalia flying it. Not like great accuracy. Uh-oh. This is where the game gets fucking sexy. They're making out before the dialogue is even finished. Oh, James. So this is an incredibly cheesy, just awful ending, but I really like it. It, it felt like such a victory as a kid. I don't remember exactly when I beat this level, but I do know I got to this level the same day that I got to the caverns, because I beat the caverns. Uh, 
Well, I beat, I beat Control, and then I beat the Caverns in the same day, and I got to this level, and I thought I had beaten it, because I ended up dying fighting Trevelyan, and, and I fell off of the fucking ledge, but because there's a cutscene, I thought that I had beaten the level, and I was like, oh man, they ain't getting too good at this, but then I saw Mission failed. But that's the only level that I think has a cutscene of you dying, other than just, you know, the blood running down and then it's showing you the guards who killed you. This is also reminiscent of the actual ending of the movie with them just making out in the jungle. But I mean, I think this is really uh, fitting for a Bond game. I mean, this game just has so much nostalgia packed into it. I mean, I think it was the very first game I ever had on the Nintendo 64. Just hours and hours of play. And as a kid, to me, nothing was cooler than James Bond for, like, several years. And, you know, James Bond first-person shooter that was, like, the state-of-the-art first-person shooter. And games just can't capture me like this anymore. And it might be because I'm not six years old anymore. That's, like, as old as I was when this came out. But Just, I mean... Not the most interesting game to let's play in retrospect. Not the most interesting game if you didn't play it as a kid, you know, it kind of just seemed like a really dated first person shooter, but if you played this when it was new, it really was just the cat's meow. I mean, it really was just something that you hadn't seen before. It was just something, it was just perfected so well. I mean, well, the first-person shooter genre, it seemed perfected, like, perfectly with this game, although it still had a long way to go. But, I mean, the whole reason I even played this game on Double O Agent, because I never even wanted to as a kid because it was too hard, was, like, like, seven or eight years ago, like, 2007 or so, when YouTube was new, before I even saw Let's Play, before I even knew what they were, there was this Let's Player... Well, not Let's Player, just this guy called Undertaker, or no, Undercover Filmmaker. And he had a video of him playing the game on 007 mode, where it's one hit, you die, and it was like the frigate level, and it was something he recorded back in the 90s, and he was just talking over it. And I found it really interesting, and he was like talking about how he remembered how, how hard that was and everything, and I didn't even know about 007 mode at that point. I hadn't even spent all that much time on the internet at that point. And I was like, oh, I gotta try this, and you know, lo and behold, I started trying it, and now it's my favorite, uh, favorite difficulty level to play on. But this guy, undercover filmmaker, he just, all his videos are gone, you know, and that type of video on YouTube is gone, where he's just talking about the video game, and he talked, like, exclusively about the video game and how he felt about it, I mean, Let's Plays are really dead. Videos like that is dead. YouTube is dead, you know. I guess it's easy to feel like everything is dead as I sit in a dark room at 3 in, in the morning. James Mod will return, but as a woman named Joanna in a completely different game called Perfect Dark. Well, I guess James Bond did return and the world was not enough, but it was not made by Rare. Ooh, a different model James Bond. There's a regular model James Bond. I really like this. You get this extra credit sequence once you beat the game. <laughs> yeah, you weren't so tough after all. I love that, like, just arrogant. They're just, like, arms up like that, shaking their head. I, I like all the different poses, and how they just have random guns. Oh, come on. Yeah, this is cool, how you get to see all the uh, different guards and what they're specifically called. And how you can play as all these now. You can play as all these character models now once you beat it on Double Agent. And there were supposed to be female scientists. And I think that should have been in the game. I would have liked some female scientists that I could kill. Yeah, and you also see like unused models in the game that you can play. Later on, and like when I got older, I liked playing as these uh just random uh guards and stuff, and like civilians and shit like that in multiplayer, but as a kid I would like always play as like Jaws or Baron Samity, which were the worst guys to play as, because Jaws is too tall and shoots above everybody, and Baron Samity's top hat counts as a, a headshot if you get shot in the head, you know, and it just gives you this big thing to shoot at. General Commando was one of my favorites as a kid. 
in the Moonraker release. And the female Moonraker release that were also cut out of the game for some reason. Now all the extra characters. How fitting these using a Moonraker. <laughs> oh, yeah. The elusive Baron Sandwich. 